we've already derived the formula that relates the voltage at the primary side of a transformer to the voltage at the secondary side of a transformer. It's just related by the turns ratio. But is this how transformers really behave? Not really. On the secondary side of a transformer is usually a load. And it's usually the case that if you load down the transformer more, or you ask more current of the transformer, then the voltage is not constant. If you look at the equation, it gives the impression that as long as the input voltage to the primary is constant, then the output voltage should be constant too with respect to current, but that's not normally the case. Let's look at the data sheet of a transformer and see evidence of this non-ideality. This transformer has a primary and a secondary side. And what I want to draw your attention to in this video is the line on the data sheet called regulation. What we're going to be doing is applying a constant voltage to the primary side. In the case of this video, I'm going to apply 230 volts to the primary side. That's the voltage here coming out of our mains. On the secondary side though, you can see here under regulation that we're going to get 13.8 volts RMS at zero amps. That's the no load case, but that voltage at the secondary side is going to drop to 10 volts if we draw 300 milliamps from the transformer. In a moment, we're going to go and set up the following experiment. I'm going to plug the primary side of the transformer into the mains, giving us 230 volts AC. I'm going to run it through a fuse for safety, and then at the secondary side of the transformer, I'm going to use a variable load resistor. We'll start with a very high resistance to give us the no load case, and then I'm going to lower down that resistor in order to ask more current of the transformer we'll be plotting the RMS voltage versus the RMS current. Let's go over to the bench and get started. In order to guard against any mishaps, I've put a 10 milliamp fuse here in series with the primary side of the transformer. We're going to be monitoring the voltage out of the mains with the multimeter back here. On the secondary side of the transformer, we have a potentiometer, so I'll be adjusting the resistance by turning this knob here. We're going to be monitoring the current through the potentiometer with the red colored multimeter here, and then we'll be monitoring the voltage across the secondary side of the transformer with the orange multimeter over there. We're going to go ahead and get started started and I'm going to have the potentiometer disconnected from the secondary side to start off so we'll be able to get an open circuit voltage. Without any current flowing through the secondary side of the multimeter, we're measuring 13 volts. I'm going to go ahead and hook up our potentiometer here on the secondary side. At 12.7 volts, we have nearly 13 milliamps flowing. Let's reduce the resistance. So at 20 milliamps, we're at 12.6 volts. Let's reduce it some more. At 40 milliamps, we're at 12.1 volts. 11.6 volts. 11.1 volts. At 100 milliamps, we're at 10.7 volts. 10.1 volts. My 10 milliamp fuse, when multiplied by 230 volts on the primary side, is going to limit the power flowing into the transformer to about 2.3 watts or so. Our fuse will eventually burn out before the transformer will be in danger because this is a three volt ampere transformer. Let's move it up to 140 milliamps and keep going in increments of 20 milliamps. 9.7 volts, 8.7 volts, 8.2 volts, 7.6 volts, and then our fuse burned out. Our mains voltage was relatively constant the whole time. Let's consider what the voltage versus current plot would have been if this had been an ideal transformer rather than the transformer that we actually measured. It would have just been a straight line. An ideal transformer would give us the same voltage irrespective of the current coming out of the secondary through the load resistor. In this case, it's a 12 volt transformer, so it would have been a flat line here on the plot. The question is, how can we model a non-ideal transformer? Let me show you the model, and then we'll take a look at our data to see if it matches the model. 
I plan to model our non-ideal transformer as an ideal transformer with a series resistance there at the secondary side. Let's look at the data that we actually measured just now. I think that it's approximately linear here. Let me add a trend line to show how these data points would fit into a linearization. We have an equation here relating voltage and current. I think that it's evident that this data follows a linear relationship. That's why I can model it this way with the resistor. Let's now try to calculate this effective resistance in our model. If I define a local ground down here, then the voltage measured is just the voltage across the load resistor. The current that's plotted here on the graph is just the current through the secondary side of the transformer and the load resistor. These are both RMS values. Without any load resistor attached, the current was zero. That's our no load condition, and that corresponds to this data point over here at 13 volts. The voltage drop across RT would be zero when there's no current through it. Therefore, I can identify this point in the circuit as a 13 volt node. If I apply Ohm's law to this resistor, I get the following equation, V equals IR. If I rearrange the terms, I get V equals minus RT times the current plus 13. If I compare it to the equation of my trend line, I can identify the value for RT. The unit here is kiloohms, so let's convert it to ohms. What I found here is a mathematical model to represent my realistic transformer. I hope you can see from this video that there are important differences between ideal transformers and real transformers, but these differences can be modeled relatively easily. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.